One of the concepts here in Albion Online that can become confusing to new players is the enchantment as well as the quality level of the gear. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down both how to enchant and what you need to enchant your gear and what the enchantment process does to your equipment as well as the benefits that it brings. And I'm going to show you guys where you need to go to enchant your equipment as well as re-roll the quality so you can get more item power out of the equipment that you like to use. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open up the map and there's two locations that we care about when it comes to enchanting and re-rolling your equipment. We have the Elder Repair Station. This is where you're going to be re-rolling the quality of your equipment. And when we get there, I'll explain why you would want to do this, as well as when you should and when you should not be re-rolling the quality of your equipment. And the other one is going to be the Tier 8 Artifact Foundry. Now, these can be found in the middle of all the different types of cities. All you need to do is open your map and look for these symbols. And the Artifact Foundry is going to be used to enchant your equipment to give it more item power, which again, I'll be showing to you once we get over there. So the first one that we're going to go to is the Artifact Foundry. Here we are at the Enchanter in town, and it is right here, the Tier 8 Artifact Foundry. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do at the Artifact Foundry, but in this video, all I'm going to do is concentrate on teaching you guys how to enchant your weapons. Now, there's going to be an enchant slot right here, and in my inventory, I have a full plat 4 set. So, we could put all of these on. I'm not going to set the abilities. Let's say I just I wanted to wear this, and then I wanted to wear a stag. I'm just going to leave the salamander down here. Let's say I wanted to run this set all together with a flat four. I do have some levels on these, but there's a couple things that we need to pay attention to when we look at these. And that is the top number. When I mouse over this, it's going to be 700. So the base item power of this is 700. The mastery bonus is from all of the leveling and stuff I've been doing with the weapon. But the number that we have to pay attention to is the 700. So all we have to do from here is we're going to, we're not going to actually use the stag right now just because we can't enchant the stag. But for these equipment, there's two key differences here of why you would want to enchant something. So this one has a base item power of 700. Again, and the tier 5 mage cow has a base item power of 800. So it has an item power that's 100 above. And the item power reflects the type of bonuses that the equipment gives you. This one gives 151 max health, 51 max energy, as well as energy regen and health regen. And then we switch to the tier 5, you can see these numbers are going to be a little bit higher, giving you more health, energy, and regeneration, as well as the mastery modifier goes off of the 330 mastery bonus that I have. Since I do have all of my cloth helms maxed out, I get 330 extra item power for my mage cow, as well as the mastery modifier, that 5% is taken from the 330. So 5% of 330 is 16.5%, so it's rounded to 16. They didn't round it up, they rounded it down. But the only thing that we really have to pay attention to is that it's 100 item power difference so from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this mage cow and i'm going to drag it in here and to do enchantments you need adept runes for tier four you need adept souls and adept relics now this is for enchanting tier four items if you want to enchant tier five six seven and eight you're going to need these same type of runes souls and relics but one tier higher so if i all of this was tier five i would need tier five runes tier five souls and tier five relics and the same goes for tier six seven and eight and these are the relics that you find in solo dungeons you find them in open world doing different activities like opening chests crystal spiders uh, small chests solo dungeons all the different activities that you like to do you're going to be finding these souls relics and runes everywhere and that's what these are used for they're used for the enchantment process there is other things they can be used for but again i'm only talking about the enchantment process in this video so when it comes to enchanting, there's going to be a certain amount that are needed for each piece of equipment. And I can lay that out for you guys. The number is going to be, you're going to need 48 runes, souls, or relics when it comes to your helm, boots, cape, and your offhand. You need 48 to take these to the next enchantment level. When it comes to the chest and bag, you're going to need 96. When it comes to your main one-handed weapon, like we have right here, this is just a one-handed main weapon. It's not two-handed. You're going to need 144 of each. For the two-handed weapon, you're going to need 192. So I brought a couple to show you guys the process. I have 48 here. And again, we're going to look at the mage cow. We have 700 item power, and then we have 800 item power in the tier five. And this is the reason why you would want to enchant something. So we're going to enchant this item. Now you can see it has the little green diamond on the bottom 
and you can see our item power increased. So it has a base of 700, but now we have plus 100 item power to enchantment. So now this is going to be around this almost the same item power as this. So this one's 800 base. This one has 700 plus 100. So these are identical, as you can see in the bonuses as well. There is a mastery bonus for a little bit more, a little bit more item power. But as you can see, if you just watch these bonuses, they're not changing when I'm switching between these two. And even the estimated market value is 3,420 for the tier five, but a 4.1 is 2,600. It's cheaper than having a tier five. So this is the reason why sometimes instead of getting a tier five, you want to buy a 4.1 or instead of getting a tier six, you want to get a tier five with one enchant on it because they give the same bonuses except one that is lower with an enchantment on it. Most of the time will be cheaper than actually buying the one above. So now we're going to do we're going to do the boots. We're going to take the boots to enchantment as well. We're going to take the cape. And we're going to take... We have the offhand that we have to do for 48. Just a light tap. So now all of these are enchanted. We're going to do the chest piece next. So we have the chest and bag, which are going to be 96. Elementary. Okay. Chest and bag are going to be 96 each. Now we're going to throw the spear in there for 144. We're going to enchant that. We're going to put the mage cow back on and then we have the one-handed that i can enchant if i want to for 192 which is the adept pike two-hander and now we're sitting at 1059 but i have a lot of levels in these so don't pay attention to that your, your item power is going to be a little bit lower if that's your first time you know if you're if you're playing albion early or you haven't leveled a lot of this equipment that i'm using but my average just went up 100 item power because i just enchanted all of these items now what we can do is we can throw this back in here again and we could take another 48 souls and enchant this again if we want to so i can enchant this and take it to point two so i could do this with all of them if i wanted to take them all to point two and sometimes it's not worth taking it to point two so i do recommend you guys always check the market sometimes a for example like a 4.3 which point three meaning that it has enchant three 4.1 is 4.2 and 4.3 each number at the end is talking about the enchant so if you ever hear someone say 4.2 that means they're talking about a tier four with two enchant on it if you ever hear that term i'm going to enchant these which again i wouldn't usually do this but for the purpose of this video i'm just showing you guys the item power so i have 100 more item power because i put these to point two and from the example that i just showed you this one is going to have more item power than this flat five and a good rule of thumb when you are looking at items that have enchantments on them is going to be, for example, this Mage Cow is a tier four. Every enchantment gives it a hundred more item power. So when it has its first enchantment, it's equivalent to a tier five. When it has two enchantments, it's equivalent to a tier six. So I just count it. I go four, five, six. This one has the same item power and bonuses as a tier six Mage Cow now because i have two enchantments on it but it's something to pay attention to as well as we can throw the spear in here and if i want to take it to point three and give it another hundred item power i can use the relics to do that so i can enchant it i'm not going to do all of them i'm just going to do this one just to show you guys but now we have plus 300 item power to this because of the enchantment that we put on it now this one is now equivalent to a it's a tier four five six seven this one has the same damage it has the same bonuses as a tier seven flat spear if you went to buy just a tier flat seven spear these would have the same bonuses now this is going to be everything you need to know when it comes to enchantments and why you would want to enchant your gear in some way and how to use the rune souls and relics when doing it i don't pay attention to these i left these in my inventory but the next thing that we're going to talk about is how to re-roll your items now when it comes to re-rolling your items and I'm actually invisible. What the hell? There I am. So, <laughs> so we're, we're going to go over to the Elder Repair Station. And there's a reason why you would want to re-roll your gear. And I actually have a bunch of normal quality gear here, which you usually wouldn't want. I bought it on normal quality, but sometimes you can buy it off the market at a higher quality. And it is cheaper that way. Or it might be more expensive, you have to be careful with it. But I just want to show you guys how to re-roll your gear if you do want to re-roll anything. Sometimes the market, the difference between an outstanding and excellent is it's stupid expensive. But then when you come here to re-roll it, it's cheaper and you might be able to get it on the first or second try and actually save a lot of money. Because sometimes it is a player-driven market, so you'd be very careful when it comes to things on the market. As there are a lot of players that might try to manipulate it and get a lot of silver from you when really it wouldn't have costed anything to re-roll it. So now that we're at the Elder Repair Station, we're going to go down to the third tab. 
we're going to do reroll quality. Now, this is where you can put items from your inventory in here to reroll the quality of them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my mage cowl, my assassin jacket, and you can do these one at a time or at the same time, and my spear. And as you can see, it shows you the percentage of what you'll get while you're rolling. So we have an 80% chance to get, and actually I'm going to do one just so this isn't as confusing. So let's just do the mage cow starting out. There's a 15% chance I'm going to get an outstanding roll on my first try. There's a 5% chance I'm going to get an excellent. There's a 0.1% chance that I'm going to get a masterpiece. Now up here, you can return the items to your inventory when it reaches a certain tier. So if I put this on excellent and I'm going to re-roll it, it'll, if it pops out as a a good quality it's still going to stay in here ready for me to re-roll it again but if it does turn into an excellent it's going to send it straight to my inventory it's just going to fly in here or back on my person it's to help you put your new items in and out so the purpose of doing your quality though is the difference between a normal and a masterpiece is 100 item power between these two so this one if you have a masterpiece as compared to this so this one is 1230 and then we switch to this one, it's 1330. So the quality actually gives us 100 more item power, which again will give you even more bonuses for the benefits of what the item piece does. Each one gives you 20, so every quality above normal gives you 20 more item power. So from here to good, we have plus 20 item power. Once we go to outstanding, we have another 20 item power, so we have 40 more. Once we go to excellent, we now have another 20, which this gives you an extra 60 item power for the quality and the masterpiece gives you 100 so a lot of times you can push out and most of the time i'm running excellent or i try to run excellent gear so that i can get that 60 extra item power to my equipment that i'm running so i can get just that much more health damage as well as health regeneration and en energy regeneration and this is the place that you can re-roll your gear so it's something that you can do as well as if you are crafting mounts and you want to have an excellent or a masterpiece, you can try to go for it here. You can reroll the quality of mounts. Like I could put the stag in here and it'll give me the same percentages. The reason you would want to reroll a stag is because for any kind of mounts that have a carry weight, the increase in quality will give it more carry weight. So a lot of times we're going to reroll this too. It's at 226 and you'll be able to see that it'll be higher once we roll it to excellent. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to throw these three items in. And I'm going to press the re-roll one time to excellent. I'm going to try to get them to excellent. Okay, there, none of them are excellent, but it does appear that we got one outstanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-roll it again for 28,000 silver. Okay, the mage cow failed. It's still outstanding, but everything else is outstanding. So now we have, we want to try to get to excellent. And as you can see here, I'll remove these again so you can see it clearly. Now that we're at outstanding, we have a 49.9% chance to get excellent. 0.1 on the masterpiece still. And we have a 50% chance to get back what we originally started with. Now, this can you got to be careful with this as it can get expensive when you're re-rolling a lot. For the purpose of this video, I am just re-rolling all of them just to show you how it works. We're going to re-roll again. It appears we already have two excellent. So we have Mage Cal and Soldier Boots at excellent. Now we're going to re-roll our last two. The spear finished at excellent. This one still hasn't rolled to excellent. And now that one is excellent as well. Now we're going to put our other three items in there. As well as our stag that we're using. And we're going to try to reroll all these to excellent as well. Outstanding. And we have two good quality. We're going to reroll again. The stag actually just finished at excellent. It was good quality and went straight to excellent. So we hit that little threshold to get that done. Which is amazing. So that right there was a fail. Every single one of these pieces got the 50% for outstanding. We just try to roll them and nothing happened. That can happen multiple times because we are playing a game of percentages. That's why you need to be very careful when you are re-rolling your gear as it can get expensive. All right, we have our last cape to do. And look, it failed again. And now it has re-rolled to excellent. So sometimes you'll get a lot of fails in, the roll, in a row. Sometimes you'll get instant excellent all the way around the board. So at the beginning of this, we had flat four, normal, a tier four set. Now we have a 4.3 spear. We have a 4.2 
all of our armor pieces as well as our offhand. Our bag is going to be able to carry more. Our stag, which originally carried 226 kilograms, now carries 264 kilograms because of the quality difference on it. So that's one of the things that you want to pay attention to. And now we have a 0.5% chance to roll to Masterpiece. And it's it's not going to happen, but for the per I'll try it one time just to show you guys. And <laughs> it failed. That would have been crazy if I actually got it, but... Some people like to roll their stuff to Masterpiece just to have it. It's kind of like something that you can show. Some people will want to buy it. But overall, that is the purpose of wanting to re-roll. So now if we mouse over the item power, we have a base item power of 700 for the tier 4. We have an enchantment of 200. We have quality plus 60. And then we have my mastery bonuses just from the levels. But just from putting two enchantments and re-rolling the quality, we have 260 more item power to our equipment and to give it some bonuses. Now again, I'm going to 100% recommend that before you guys think about re-rolling or enchanting your items, check the market. Sometimes a enchanted item on the market will be cheaper than you buying the runes to do it. But if you are saving up the runes, souls, and relics, you can use these two enchant items like royal sandals, a fiend cow, a lot of the items that are more expensive at the higher ones up. If you are saving a lot of these, you can use it. You can buy it flat and go enchant it yourself now. And you can save a lot of money that way if you are saving these up. That's a really smart way to go about it. But overall, that's going to be everything you guys need to know for enchanting as well as re-rolling the quality of your gear. But that's going to be the end of it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a lot about enchanting and re-rolling the quality of your gear. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. And I'll see all of you in Albion Online.